Hello. Today's talk is about data linkage and I'm going to give you a very brief overview. My name is Natalie Shlomo and I'm based at the University of Manchester. So what do we mean by data linkage? Well, data linkage brings together information from two different records that we believe to belong to the same person based on a set of matching variables. Now, if the two records agree on all the matching variables, it is unlikely that they would have agreed by chance, and we can be quite assured that the link is correct and will be high. In other words, the pair will belong to the same person. If all of the matching variables disagree, the pair will not be linked, and it is unlikely that it belongs to the same person. And the problem is, of course, when we have intermediate situations where some matching variables agree and some matching variables disagree, and we need to predict whether the pair is a true match or not a true match. And often this will require some sort of clerical intervention to determine the matching status. And the problem, of course, in data linkage is the presence of errors when we collect the data and where we don't have unique high quality identifiers in order to carry out the linkage. So the challenges of data linkage are the errors, the variations, the missing data on the information that we have to link two records together. The differences in the way the data is captured and maintained in different databases. For example, we might have different versions of the date of birth compared to age. The dynamics of the databases, the changes over time, for example, name changes due to marriage, divorce, address changes, these are all challenges in a successful data linkage. The typical problem in strings, matching variables that are strings, we can have misspellings, transpositions, fused or split words. For example, the first and the last name may be fused together and we need to split them. Uh, missing or extra letters, the way the strings are uh, typographical errors in the strings, extra information, missing punctuation. Typical problems also arise in numerical variables where the numbers may be transposed or there may be insertions or deletions. So data linkage typically involves three stages. The first stage is the pre-linkage. This is where we need to edit and data clean the data sets, uh, parsing uh, fused strings, standardizing the matching variables, and this requires quite a bit of work to make sure that the two databases are able to be compared uh, through their matching variables. The second stage is data, the linkage itself, the data linkage. We need to bring together uh, all possible pairs for comparisons and determining the correct matches. In other words, do they belong to the same person? Um, all possible pairs are produced within something we call blocks, which I'll mention in a few minutes. These are determined by blocking variables. And finally, the third stage is the post-linkage. This is where we need to check for residuals or pairs that were not linked. Uh, we need to determine the error rates and to make sure that, when we, uh, that we have error rates so that we can carry out analysis, uh, take it into account any linkage errors that we have in the data set. So what are we looking for when we need to determine the matching variables? Well, they have to be unique, they have to be available and known, accurate and stable over time. So obviously we uh, are conducting data linkage to carry out statistical research and to inform policy and the two main methods of data linkage and their combination is deterministic exact matching and probabilistic matching. So I will be going over both of these uh, two types of data linkages. In deterministic matching uh, this is based on an exact one-to-one -one character match of the matching variables. In probabilistic matching, uh, these are based in partial identifiers which may be available, such as names and addresses, and a, a score is computed for each potential pair based on the individual probabilities of agreement for each matching variable. 
Deterministic linkage or exact matching, this is where the records in two data sets must agree exactly on the matching variables in order to conclude that they correspond to the same individual. And usually this is done when we have a high quality identifier such as an ID number. Now what happens here is that all matching variables have the same weight associated to them. So for example, matching on gender would carry the same weight as matching on the last name. Uh, so this will be quite different than in the probabilistic linkage. Now even in deterministic linkage we can incorporate some errors. For example, in fuzzy matching, this is exact matching carried out with say a wild card or a set of substrings. For example, uh, a wild card of A uh, star A star A can be any number of words such as banana and pajama. These are, uh, this method for example is used in um, search engines on the internet. Or we can uh, transform the data such as using a phonetic code such as soundex for the names or we can truncate the uh, names, uh, for example the first three or five letters of a name which must uh, match exactly. So there are ways to incorporate errors in deterministi deterministic linkage. The important thing to remember is that each uh, character has to agree exactly and then there is no weight associated to the matching variables. In contrast, what is probabilistic data linkage? This does not require that all identifying fields match exactly in order to be able to conclude that the records belong to the same individual. Basically, we carry out a frequency analysis of the data values necessary and in order to calculate uh, for each matching variable a weight or a score. And this indicates for any pair of records how likely it is that they refer to the same entity. Now, uncommon value agreements would give stronger evidence for the linkage. Large weights will be assigned to fields that match and small weights are assigned to fields that don't match. And then we would sum the scores over all the matching variables, compare the sum to a threshold, uh, and uh, from there determine whether the pair should be declared a match, a non-match, or if we're undetermined or undecided, we can send to clerical review. Now, in probabilistic data linkage, the method relies on calculating scores, and these are based on probabilities. This determines agreements between the matching variables between a pair of records, as well as the disagreements. So either from a previous experience of record linkage on a similar application, or perhaps we ha take a preliminary linkage exercise, produce some sort of gold standard linkage, we need to calculate how likely it is that the variables that do agree between a pair would have done so by chance or if the pair were not correctly match. And this is compared to how likely the, the agreement would be in correctly matched record pairs. Now we can also use latent modeling, latent class modeling, EM algorithms to estimate population, uh, to estimate the matching probabilities without the need for a previous experience of linkage or any test data, but this is a, a topic for uh, another day. Now probabilistic record linkage is more computational demanding and more difficult to program, but it reduces the number of overlooked matches by being able to model the inconsistencies in the data and taking them into account. So what are the criterion for good matching variables? We need to have the, uh, the, that the agreement between variables, which are more typical of correctly matched pairs, rather than those which might have occurred by chance in unrelated records. So, for example, variables that might agree by chance in unma unmatched record pairs are those which don't divide the population into many subclasses. For example, gender, there would be a 50% chance of having a correct match on gender, for example. 
The key technical issues in the development of data linkage procedures are good quality identifiers that are available to discriminate between the person to whom the record refers and all other persons, being able to decide whether discrepancies in identifiers are due to mistakes in reporting for a single individual, and being able to process a large volume of data within a reasonable amount of computing processing time. So there are three key parameters for a probabilistic data linkage and I will be going over each one separately. The first is the quality of the data. The second, the chance that values of a matching variable will randomly agree. And finally, the third, the ultimate number of true matches that exist in the database. So not all fields for matching variables give you the same amount of information and uncommon value agreements should show stronger evidence for linkage. To incorporate this discriminating power of the matching variables, the weights are computed as a ratio of two frequencies, which I will then translate into probabilities. The first is the number of agreements of a field in record pairs that represent the same individual. And the second frequency is the number of agreements in a field in record pairs that do not represent the same individual. In order to determine these agreements and disagreements, we need to define something called an agreement pattern, which I've no denoted here by a uh, lambda. For example, three matching variables with binary uh, comparison tests whether the pair agrees, for example, on last name or disagrees, whether the pair agrees on first name or disagrees, whether the pair agrees on street name or disagrees. So a simple agreement pattern in the case of three matching variables, for example, would be 101. The pair agrees on last name, disagrees on first name, and agrees on street name. And in fact, for three matching variables, there would be eight such comparison vectors. Now, agreement patterns might be complex, and they might be based on string comparators, so not necessarily binary agree-disagree. For example, we might have a 0.66% uh, 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 proportion in agreements on last name uh, due to a string comparator. Uh, now, the first parameter that I mentioned is based on the data quality. Data quality is the degree to which the information contained for a matching variable is accurate and stable over time. So data entry errors, missing data, false states, obviously this diminishes the accuracy and produces low quality uh, data. The higher quality data, the more likely we are to be able to make a correct match. So data quality, the first parameter, is reflected in one of the probabilities needed for this process. And in the Felagy Center framework of 1969, they define this as the M probability. The M probability is the conditional probability that a record pair has an agreement pattern gamma given that it is a match in other words, the same person, and we write the M probability as the conditional probability, uh, as you can see in the notation there. Now this is approximately 1 minus the error rate. The computer science literature might refer to it as the reliability. So how much the matching variable um, has errors associated to, to it due to um, data entry errors, missing data, etc. The second parameter uh, depends on the number of random agreements, and this is denoted in the Felagy Center framework as the U probability. Uh, more formally, the U probability is the conditional probability that a record pair has an agreement pattern gamma given that it is not a match. So you can see that the, in the notation, the um, condition is on no match, not a match. 
The third parameter is the overall number of matches, uh, potential matches in our data sets. And this is denoted as the probability of M, probability of match. Now the parameter or the probability of interest, of course, is the match probability. This is the probability of a match given an observed agreement pattern. Uh, so according to the Bayes theorem, we can calculate that using the formula as shown on the slide. The probability of a match giving agreement is equal to the M probability, which is the probability of agreement given a match, times the probability of match divided by the probability of agreement. This uh, matching probability is uh, based on something called a likelihood ratio. This is called a, um, uh, the likelihood ratio is based on the agreement likelihood ratio. In other words, the ratio of the M probability divided by the U probability. Now, Felge and Center assume conditional independence. This means that the errors associated to one particular matching variable is independent to errors associated to another matching variable, which is quite a strong assumption. Um, and in that case, the comparison vector that we defined on the previous slide can be decomposed into its separate components. So the likelihood ratio is uh, a ratio where on the numerator we have the M probabilities for each one of the matching variables separately and in the denominator the multiplication of the U probabilities for each matching, uh, matching variable separately. So the likelihood ratio is our overall score, our test statistic. And we can order these comparison vectors by the agreement ratio, R of gamma, and choose thresholds and upper and lower cutoff values to determine the correct matches and the not correct matches. Now it's a little hard to multiply uh, probabilities together and in fact the framework of Felge sunder takes the log of the likelihood ratio uh, and in, therefore, instead of multiplying these ratios, we um, add them up, we can sum them by taking the log. It can be any log transformation, but we take the log of the M over U for the first matching variable, plus the log of M over U for the second matching variable, etc., etc., in order to produce an overall score. And this is what the, in essence, what the probabilistic data linkage is doing. So here's an example. Let's assume that I have prior data, prior, prior test data, and I give you the M probabilities, the probability of agreement on a particular characteristic X, given it's a true match. Now obviously these are quite high, 0.9 if it's first name, last name, age, 0.8 if it's house number, street name, so a little lo lower quality for house number, street name, but nevertheless, uh, our M probabilities are generally high. We do expect our data sets to have high quality and, and minimal errors associated to the variables. The U probability, the probability of agreement on a particular characteristic X, given it's not a match, uh, is 0.1 if it's first name, last name, age, and 0.2 if it's house number and street name. So you have a set of M probabilities, you have a set of U probabilities. Uh, there they are again on top of this slide, the M probabilities and U, prob U probabilities. I am now going to put together all potential pairs in my uh, two databases. And here's a particular record. I have a Samantha Smith and a Sam Smith in name. I have address, both of them have 435 Main Street, birth year, 1954 for the first, 1955 for the second record. One is a male and one is a female. So what is my agreement vector now, my comparison vector? Uh, we can see here that there is a disagree on first name. There's an agree on last name. There's an agree on house number. There's an agree on street number, a street name. There is a disagree, however, in the birth year and a disagree in sex. So my comparison vector in this case would be 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. 
So now I have to put together the log, in this case I'm using the natural log of the likelihood ratio. Now if there's a disagreement, instead of the m over u, we take 1 minus m over 1 minus u, because you see that there in the first term, there's a disagree on first names, so we take the natural log of 1 minus 0.9 divided by 1 minus 0.1. We have an agree on last names, so that is the log of 0.9 over 0.1. We have agree on house number, which is the log of 0.8 over 0.2, etc., etc. For each potential pair, we can now calculate an overall score, which will be used to determine the cutoffs for uh, determining the match status. In this case, we got a minus 0.81. Now you can probably thinking to yourself, we can probably improve on this algorithm. For example, we can use a dictionary and string comparator metrics which might give partial agreement weight to Sam and Samantha. Perhaps Sam is a nickname for Samantha. We also see a deviation of one year in the birth year and perhaps that might be sensible to think of that as a partial agreement instead of a disagreement. And so there are ways to incorporate dictionaries, string comparators, etc., to give partial agreements to matching variables. So data quality, as I mentioned, is quantified by the M probability with respect to the accuracy and stability of the matching variable. And for any given field, any given matching variable, the same value for m probability applies to all records. It doesn't matter what the value is. It's all about the error or the quality of the data in that particular matching variable. But you can see that the u probability, this is where the distinguishing power, the discriminating power is. Uh, this can be obtained, for example, that simply by thinking that the probability that two records randomly agree. I gave you the example of gender, which has a random agreement of one out of two, or one out of the number of values. Month of birth, for example, would be one out of 12. Uh, age, perhaps, could be one out of 100. And we can think of the U probability as uh, just the overall probability of a random agreement. Now, in contrast to the M probability, a matching variable may have multiple values of U probabilities, each corresponding to a specific value in the matching variable. So, for example, the U probability for last name, perhaps you might want to give more weight if uh, there's an agreement on a name such as Zabrinsky compared to Smith. So the U probability typically is estimated by the proportion of records with a specific value based on the frequencies seen in, say, a large primary data source. And I can't uh, end the probabilistic data linkage without discussing a notion called blocking. Now there are a number of possible comparisons increases with the product of the file sizes. So for large files, let's say I have two files, each of size 10,000, that produces 100 million comparisons that we need to look at and produce comparison vectors and overall scores. So what we do in data linkage is that we restrict the comparisons to blocks of data where one or more variables need to match exactly. So now you can see we're introducing uh, exact matching into the probabilistic matching framework. And the idea is to uh, institute some uh, exact matching on a blocking variable which are likely to re refer to the same person and therefore we reduce the amount of time that we need searching through the uh, files, through searching through the pairs. So we're utilizing a deterministic approach to help us with the probabilistic method of record linkage and uh, we can block sequentially, so in a typical framework of uh, data linkage which would be a one-to-one -one match, uh, let's say we have a post-enumeration survey that needs to be matched back to the census file. Uh, typically that's done sequentially and iteratively using different variables for the blocks. 
Uh, this reduces the amount of pairs uh, that we need to look at because only the uh, potential pairs that match on a blocking variable will be produced. Restrictive uh, deterministic matching, for example, we could block on postcode and surname, carry out the data linkage, carry out the clerical review on the set of uh, designated potential matches, and then we put our match data set aside and we proceed through another iteration through the residuals of the two files that were not matched, perhaps with another blocking criteria such as year of birth. And this is the way we carry out the linkage using an iterative process, interchanging blocking variables and matching variables. So once we have our overall scores, we need to determine thresholds. And these thresholds determine the match status of whether we will determine them as a true match, not a true match, or we're not decided and we need to send to clerical review. So as in classic decision theory and statistics, these decisions or thresholds are determined by minimizing two errors the type 1 error and the type 2 error. The type 1 error in the framework of the Felge Center record linkage is the error of linking unmatched records. So we put together a pair, we said these are a match, we put them in the match data set. These are now ready, uh, the match data set ready for analysis, but we have errors. The type 1 error, we have uh, pairs that should not have been matched. The type 2 error is the error of not linking matched records. So we have still in our residual data sets uh, po potential pairs that we did not find. Um, and as I mentioned, since link record linkage can be an iterative process, we might find them again in a subsequent pass uh, through the data. Now, as in classic uh, statistical theory, these thresholds are determined by how much you are willing to be wrong based on these two error types. And these are predetermined by you as the data, linker, uh, data linkers. So the, you determine how much you're willing to be wrong in the type 1 error, type 2 error, and this will determine the cutoffs or the thresholds. Of course, the high values of the overall score suggest a correct match. The low values of the overall scores would suggest an incorrect match, and in between, we might be undecided and we'll need to carry out some clerical review. So, what constitutes high and low? Well, suppose we have a frequency distribution determine the critical values of high or low values based on these levels of significance, the type 1, type 2 error, or how much you are willing to be wrong. So perhaps I have some training data again where we know the true match status and uh, some gold standard data set, and we can derive these distributions for the true matches and the true non-matches. The lower distribution, of course, are the non-matches because they have the smaller weights and it's actually uh, also a very large group because there are a lot of potentially non-matches. Um, and um, this is where we need to look at the, um, the upper tail to determine the, uh, the error type and to determine the threshold. And of course, the matches would have the upper distribution or the higher weights. So in this slide uh, is a figure representing these uh, distributions of the non-matches and matches, assuming that I was able to make them into a nice normal bell-shaped curves. So you see they're a mixture. On the lower end, the small uh, overall scores, you see those are the non-matches. And on the right-hand side, where the scores are high, uh, you see the matches. And you can see, of course, that the curve is quite large for the non-matches. There are quite a few more non-matches than there are matches. And the idea, of course, is to choose thresholds based on your type 1, type 2 errors. So we're looking for two thresholds, a score which I denote by W+, plus, above which we will automatically classify the pair as a correct match and a W minus, below which we automatically classify the pair as an incorrect match, 
and in between the W minus and W plus, we would need to carry out a clerical review. So I'm going to now zoom into this figure uh, in the middle there, looking at that exactly where that mixture is occurring between the non-matches and the um, true matches in the next slide. So the decision rule is based on three types of pairs. Those that we believe to be a correct match, those that are, uh, we believe not to be a correct match would be on the left hand side and in the middle where that mixture is occurring, you can see there the uh, tails of the matches and the non-matches coming in from different directions as I zoomed into the mixture part. And we can look at the uh, preset, our type 1 and type 2 errors. Uh, on the non-matches, the upper tail would be the type 1 error, as you can see that's pointed out uh, with the error. And on the coming from the matches, on the lower end of the tail of the matches is the type 2 error. And these are preset, right? You are the data linker. You preset how much you are willing to be wrong. And this is what drives our... Um, cutoff thresholds as you can see by the vertical lines in the mixture. So anything above the uh, W plus is considered a match, everything below the W minus is considered the non-match and you can see in the figure what the errors are in each of these decisions based on the type 1, type 2 error and all of those in the middle between W minus and W plus will be sent off to clerical review and manually reviewed to determine their match status. So after record linkage, uh, once we've carried out our um, decision rule, we should check for errors, we check, uh, carry out perhaps logical checks in the data for evaluation using other uh, key variables, not necessarily those that are matching variables. So for example, if you're matching um, uh, death records with a uh, hospital discharges, you would want to make sure that you don't have any hospital discharges after a death. Lots of ways to use logical uh, statistical data editing and logical checks to make sure that your uh, data sets are, um, have little errors and no errors in them. And obviously the poor quality data, we can get errors. And what is recommended, of course, on those pairs that are declared a match, even if you're doing an exact uh, deterministic matching, you have your match data set. This is what you're going to use for your uh, analysis. Uh, which you know could be for informing policy, so very important to understand if there are any errors in that linked data set. Carry out a small random sample, check for the accuracy in the matching status, particularly for those that might be, have, might be close to the uh, threshold cutoff values. And on those pairs that were not matched, also carry out a small random sample, check for the accuracy in the match status. And of course, these errors uh, can be used to compensate for linkage errors when you analyze your linked data using classical measurement error uh, framework, measurement error um, models. Um, but again, this would be a subject for another talk. So just to look at the, uh, what our decision, our dispersion matrix would look like in any decision theory in classic, uh, classical uh, statistics, we would have our uh, columns defined as the true status, the null hypotheses versus the alternative hypotheses. In this case, the column of the null hypotheses is the non-matches, they're not matched, and the alternative hypotheses are the matches. On the rows, we have our decision. We had a test statistic, we had an overall score based on the likelihood ratio uh, and based on our criteria, our thresholds, we determined and decided whether they were a not linked pair. We did not put them together as matches. In other words, we failed to reject the null hypotheses versus we linked the pairs, right? We decided they are a match and rejected the null hypotheses. And now on the diagonal of our decision uh, matrix, you can see that we made the correct uh, choice. 
So if we did not link the pairs and indeed there were not matches, great, we uh, made the right choice, not linked non-matches. This is also known, especially in epidemiology studies, as the true negative. On the uh, other diagonal, we have the linked matches, made the right choice, also known as the true positive. Where the type 1 error and type 2 error comes in are the off diagonals. So if the true status was a non-match and we link them together, as I previously mentioned, this is the type 1 error. It's also known as the false positives. We linked non-matches. And the other off diagonal, we have not linked uh, matches. This is the type 2 error, as I previously defined, also knows, known as the false negatives. Now what you can see here outside of the uh, matrix is uh, various uh, quality or evaluation uh, parameters that should be calculated by data linkers and delivered to um, researchers. Uh, for example, the proportion of the false positives, the proportion of the false negatives. These are very important criteria to understand uh, the quality of our linkage process. Um, the uh, 1 minus the false positive rate is also known as the specificity uh, and the sensitivity or in computer language, uh, computer, uh, computer science literature is also known as recall. Um, and also in the computer science literature you find another measure which is called precision. Now notice that precision is actually the number of true positives out of the totally, uh, total linked pairs. So in the computer science literature, you'll find recall and precision in order to evaluate your uh, linkage process. So what is the overall process? Uh, we first need to select our matching variables and our blocking variables. We need to edit, parse, produce some phonetic codes or string comparators, standardize. Believe me, the pre-processing stages is the most cumbersome and the most work uh, in order uh, to carry out in a data linkage. Once we are satisfied that both data sets have high quality uh, and are consistently and standardized together, we then block and sort both files. Now, first we carry out a deterministic method. If you don't have an ID, a unique ID, you might want to concatenate the uh, matching variables, carry out a deterministic method, perhaps uh, you'll find some correct matches. Those that are matched, put them into the match data set. Those that are not matched, we carry out a probabilistic method. Again, using probabilities and agreement ratios uh, based on test data, determine the thresholds, uh, and match the two data sets. Now, of course, we could have uh, good matches. Uh, some have to be sent to the undecided clerical review, uh, and then those are um, sent to the true matches. And once you have the true matched uh, file to, in order to carry out your analysis, you need to make sure that there are no errors, uh, check for uh, errors, check for the, the logic uh, er, l l logical errors in the data set uh, and then uh, use those to correct for your statistical analysis and a measurement error model and, and you can go ahead and use the data set for informing policy, research, whatever the reason is for linking the data. Thank you very much for your attention.